Hello everyone, this is Nikita and I'm here with a video on data pages in Pega. So uh, most of you have requested for this video and uh, I feel this is important part of uh, having uh, a knowledge on because um, everything in Pega we, we do through data pages and it is one of the important rules to learn when we start out. So uh, let's get to the uh, things we will cover in this video on data pages. So the first thing is we will understand what is a data page, uh, you know, uh, what is the caching mechanism it uses and uh, how, how do we create the data pages, how do we parameterize it and um, uh, several other stuffs. Then we will understand that uh, how do we source the data pages. There are different ways we can do it. Uh, we can do it through report definition, otherwise through activity, data transform connector and there are several other options but we'll cover this basics. Uh, then we have the modes of data pages. Uh, it can be read only, editable, saveable. All of the modes are used in different scenarios. Uh, so there is no wrong or right. So we will understand that uh, in which scenario we use what. Then coming to the structure of data pages. So basically we have two structures. Uh, it can be uh, loaded through a list or it can be loaded through a page. So we will uh, take an example and understand this. Then there is a scope of data pages. Uh, there are three scopes through which we can uh, load the data pages, node, requester and thread. We will go through uh, each one of them. Then there is a refresh strategy. Uh, the, uh, there can be different uh, type of refresh uh, according to the our, according to our scenarios. So we have a uh, reload once per interaction, do not reload when and the other we will understand through that also as an example. So that that's the thing we will con uh, we will cover in this particular video. So coming to the data pages, uh, so it is a type of rule as uh, in uh, Pega everything is uh, uh, done through a rule. So this is also a rule. Uh, basically, it fetches the data. So we use it for fetching a data. It is also a page like uh, I have shown uh, shown in the debugging video that in clipboard there are number of pages, there are user pages, there are data pages, uh, all of those kind of pages, right? So this is also a data page which, uh, which you can see it in a clipboard under a section of data pages. So, uh, so what it does is uh, what we have to do, we have to fetch the data from uh, different classes. Uh, it can be like our data classes, it can be a work class or it can be uh, from some external sources that also can be done. So uh, th that is the basics uh, and then it, it is used as a caching mechanism. So uh, when we fetch the data pages, like we can uh, hit a uh, DB, right? So, but hitting a DB every time we want the data can be very costly. So what we do is we uh, we call, uh, we hit the database once and then we save it in our memory, in, an, in our clipboard and it act as a caching mechanism where which we can use it throughout our application to different modes uh, of data pages. So that is why that is why data pages actually uh, saves uh, more DB hits or more external source hit. When we calling some external source to fetch the data, maybe we do not want to call every time. We can just call once and save it uh, in our memory uh, if it is not something which changes uh, every time. So that that is why we use the data pages. And uh, so I have explained that we can load the data page and reuse it for some particular amount of times so according to our scenario. And then uh, data page, uh, uh, how do we recognize that this page is a data page? So because there can be different number of pages in our application, it might be we have created some page through page new in our activity or some other pages have been created to uh, recognize that this is a data page. We started with D underscore and declare underscore was a legacy um, way. So it was used uh, before seven. So uh, now it is used as D underscore. Now uh, coming to parameterized. So to increase reusability, data pages can be parameterized and with the value we pass, it uh, loads according to that. 
So that's the basics uh, of data pages. Now coming to the sources of data pages, uh, report definition, activity, data transform, connector, all of those uh, we will go through our application and maybe understand by an example. So uh, coming to, let me check if I have some data pages already. Maybe we can take an example of an out of box data page also. Okay. Okay. So this is a type of page data page. Yeah, we can understand from this now. So coming to the data sources, right? Uh, so when you click here, you can see that the number of sources through which we can uh, call the data pages. So coming to connector, as we understand connector is basically uh, when we uh, connect to some external system. So we, you, we can use a connector and then uh, accordingly, we have to give the connector name, which we might have created. Like if uh, it can be a rest connector or some other connector, and then we have to provide the name of the uh, connector. So that's how you can source the data page through connector. Then uh, uh, second one is data transform. So yeah, you can call any data transform uh, and then uh, use that data transform to uh, load data, uh, to load the values in your data pages, right? So this is a uh, data transform. Then report definition. So uh, report definition is basically uh, is an interface or a query we write to fetch the data from database. So that's what this data page is doing. Data page, when we source it uh, from a report definition, uh, whatever name of the report definition we provide here, it uh, goes to that report definition, checks what, uh, what is the table uh, which is mapped to that class of the report definition. Suppose if I give you an example, maybe some report definition. Now I cannot check here. Maybe somewhere here. Okay, so this is a data table editor report. You can use that. So uh, whatever uh, name of the report definition you will provide. So accordingly, uh, according to the report definition, it uh, creates uh, it creates a query, and that query hits the database uh, with the table uh, like map to this particular class. So this class is in our is the report definition on, and this would be mapped to one table in our database. So that's where you will uh, get the data from. So when you get the data, you save it in this data page. So this is report definition. Then you have a lookup. Lookup is basically, uh, when, when you see lookup, you, you will have a class name which you can give here. So that class will, whatever it, uh, it has, the value it has, uh, it can fetch and uh, save it in this particular data page. So that's just lookup is uh, next is activity similar to data transform uh, you you can have an activity you can uh, uh, fetch anything from the db or in the activity you can also call a report definition or you in the activity you can uh, save some data in this data page and accordingly this can be loaded then there is some of uh, different sources which uh, which we would cover in the advanced video we will create so for basics uh, i think that is enough for us to understand right so this was the sources of data pages coming to the modes of data page that three three basic modes read only editable and savable so coming to read only uh, what happens is uh, suppose if we want to have some data uh, from from somewhere and uh, which we do not want the user to edit. So this is something which is a read-only data page. Uh, so, uh, so that's what the user doesn't have access to change uh, anything in that data page. That's called read-only data page. Uh, and uh, coming to editable, uh, uh, the name, under, name makes you understand what can be the editable data page. So this page or this data page 
uh, has the uh, advantage where you the user can edit uh, the data page uh, and uh, save the value in this particular data page so yeah so this is editable savable has some extra feature where you can edit also and you can then uh, save it in your database so you can see there is an extra option coming up so you can do a database save in uh, that class whichever class you want to save it and then you can have an extra data transform and validate rule so these are the three modes of data pages coming to the structure of data page so list and page these are the two structures which we get so you can you can see here page and list page is uh, just one page you would be able to see but the list is like you have several values which you can uh, fetch from some particular uh, table in the database or anywhere and then you can show it to the user so this is page and list now scope scope is node requester and thread so uh, so you can see here why it is now coming as only thread and requester is you have kept it as so when you kept the mode as read only you would see that there are three options thread requester and node so uh, let me explain you one by one so what does uh, uh, data page with the scope of node does is uh, whoever accesses this application uh, all the requesters uh, with all the threads will see the same value of the data page. So it's not user, spe uh, user specific, it is node specific. So in that particular node, all the uh, user, all the user, all the requesters will see the same value of the data page. So that's node. So uh, if I give you an example, a node data page can be a list of currencies uh, which will not change with each user. Yeah. Coming to the next one is uh, requester. So requester data page is basically uh, a particular requester. Uh, throughout his journey of the application, he might be going through different stages. So when he logs in, uh, a particular data page is loaded. If a requester data page is loaded, uh, this same data page would be reused throughout his journey right throughout his login journey so that is basically requesters uh, scope data pages it will not change for that particular user when the other user logs in he will see a different value so that is because there's requester changes right so that is particular to a requester data page next one is thread data page so thread data page is basically uh, within the same thread okay within the same thread if this data if this data page is loaded the same data page would be reused if needed within the thread okay within the thread it would be same within the request it can be different i'm just saying within the thread it can it would be same so that's that's uh, the three type of scope coming to refresh strategy uh, let me show you how does it uh, look so this is basically the tab load management tab where you see different kind of refresh strategy. So this particular page management clear data page, this is used to flush the data page. And what I mean by flushing the data page is um, uh, like if you have loaded the data page and uh, you want it to be again, uh, again uh, do the sourcing from the whatever source you specify there in the data page. So that's when you will flush the data page. Uh, it can be manually done through here when the developer can do it for some reasons, right? Uh, for uh, his uh, testing or his uh, development work. And other way is we can do it through a function. We have different kind of function to flush the data page where we can specify the parameter as the name of the data page and the data page can be cleared or flushed. So that's where a clear data page comes into picture. Coming to refresh uh, strategy. So as you can see that there are uh, this reload once per interaction. So what it basically does, every interaction, every everything you do in UI, for each UI, 
this particular uh, data page would be again reloaded. So what I mean by reload is again it will go to the source, do whatever activity you have specified in activity or if it is a connector again going to the connector and fetching the value. So that's what it will do, reload once per interaction. Do not reload when, uh, here we can specify a when condition. So whatever when condition you will specify, uh, it, will, it will check whether it is going true or false. So when it is true, it will do not reload. So it will not load. But if it's false, it will load. So that's how it uh, checks its uh, refresh uh, strategy of the data page. Uh, now this one is reload if older than. So suppose you want to specify some time, days, hours or minute or second, after which it should again load the data page. So maybe uh, you have uh, some scenario where this data page changes uh, every, uh, maybe every day, 5 a.m. or something. So uh, what, I, what I can do is I can just uh, do it as reload if older than one day. And then when one day passes, this data page would again go to the source and fetch the value. So that's how we can, that's how we can uh, have our refresh strategy configured. Now coming to limit to a single data page, uh, what basically it means is, uh, I have told you that there can be parameterized data page, right? So this particular data page with some parameter, suppose I have some parameter here, according to the parameter I give, there can be a number of data page loaded in the clipboard. So uh, if I give you an example, suppose this is a clipboard and here you see some data page. Let me show you some, maybe some thread level data page. So uh, with, suppose I have a data page here and again the same data page is there but with the different uh, parameter. So this particular bracket, whatever you see after the bracket, these are all parameters. So this is parameter name, this is parameter value. So if suppose I have the same data page, but uh, different parameters here, if I do not want this to happen, I just want only one parameter, uh, the data page with only one parameter to be here at one time, then I can just make it as limit to a single data page. So what will happen is whatever is the newest uh, data page with a parameter, only that will stay in clipboard, other would be uh, removed. So that's how it is. So that, that was the uh, basics of the data pages coming to the post load processing. Uh, now why we use a post load processing here? So, uh, okay, so I have told you that there can be connector, there can be activity, there can be report definition, number of sources of uh, data page, right? But maybe there is a scenario where after you source the data page, there is some uh, post processing you want to do in an, uh, in the data page, right? So maybe you want to add some value or with some logic, you want to change some value, you want to update some value after the sourcing is done. So in that scenario, we, we just add some activity here, maybe some activity here. And uh, after this data page sources uh, the particular, uh, from some particular, uh, you know, whatever you specify here, it would uh, go to the post load processing, do its processing and then come back. So that, that was all about the theory, uh, theory of the data pages, like whatever we have covered here, uh, uh, very theoretically. And I have shown you how does it look in Pega. But now coming to the applications, how we uh, apply this in every different scenarios. For that, we will have another, another video where I will explain uh, each of uh, the data page uh, modes through a practical example. This was all about this video. Uh, thank you all for watching my video. See you again in my next video. Keep watching till then and please subscribe to my video, like my video, comment and share it. Thank you so much. See you again till we meet. Bye.